Hi, and a huge welcome to Steve's Kitchen. I had a message from uh, Babsy Schaefer. She was saying she'd been looking at my German recipe for the bretzel, the soft bretzel. They are absolutely delicious, by the way. But it had me thinking about a favorite bread of mine from Germany, the pumpernickel. It's a dark rye bread. It is fantastic. And I have a recipe I've used for many, many years. It's a little bit unusual, but it produces the most delicious pumpernickel. And I'm gonna share it with you today. So come on over here, let's make pumpernickel. Now we have a lot of ingredients that are going into this pumpernickel bread, so I'm listing them below the video itself, and of course on steveskitchen.com, you can see the ingredients there. Uh, we've got 200 grams, that's seven ounces of bread flour, strong bread flour, uh, 120 grams or four ounces of whole wheat or whole grain flour, and 100 grams or three and a half ounces of rye flour. This is a beautiful textured flour. So we're putting all our dry ingredients in here at the moment. And we're going to want three teaspoons of yeast, a little extra yeast for this one because it's a heavy bread. On the other side of the bowl, away from the yeast, I'm putting one and a half teaspoons of salt. Now two of the unusual ingredients I put into this and I haven't seen it used before is cocoa. I've got a Dutch processed cocoa here. I'm putting three tablespoons. It really adds a lovely dark texture and flavor to the pumpernickel bread. And another unusual ingredient is ground coffee beans. Now you can use regular coffee, but a teaspoon of ground coffee beans really works well in this recipe. And to my mind, a tablespoon of caraway seeds. You can't do without caraway in pumpernickel. It's just an excellent flavor. Now we'll just take a whisk and mix these dry ingredients together. And next we're going to add in our wet ingredients. I've got 270 mils of warm water, which I'm just going to pour into there. I'll put it all in, famous last words. I hope that works. I'm adding a tablespoon and a half of oil, a vegetable oil, and a good rich molasses. Now you could use treacle, and there's a reason I went with the oil first, because hopefully this slightly oiled tablespoon will let the molasses drop in and leave the spoon nice and clean like that. Now three tablespoons of that. And now let's start to use either a spoon or a whisk and draw all these wet ingredients into the dry. This just keeps our hands clean at the start. We are gonna get a little dirty making this bread. And now I'm gonna get my hand in there and start to draw this dough together. Now I'm happy with the way that started to pull together. It's a very sticky dough. It's absolutely beautiful and rich. Now I'm gonna put some of that rye flour on my work surface. And then what we're going to do, if I can get that unstuck, is we're going to knead this for a good 10 minutes to stretch out what little gluten is in this bread. Uh, we wanna make the most of it, so I want to fold and push and stretch out those glutens. Now I've been working that dough for about 10 minutes and you can see there's a beautiful elasticity coming to the dough now. I mean, it's not like a regular bread dough, it's a lot more grainy, but you can see there's tension in there. What we're gonna do now is take this and pop it back into a bowl. First of all, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of oil in there. Just coat the bread. Then I'm just going to cover this over with some plastic wrap. I'm going to leave it for an hour and a half or so in a warm place until it's doubled in size. Now after an hour or so, you see this has risen beautifully. Uh, this won't have the tension that a normal dough has, but you can see I've got to knock the air out of that now. And I'm going to lift it out onto the side. And I'm going to fold this bread in on itself. I want to roll it into a sausage shape. Now, as I say, you won't get the tension that you will with a full gluten loaf because this flour has a lot of grain in it. But I'm now going to lift that and I'm going to drop it into a two pound or one kilo loaf tin. And then we want to leave that again in a warm area. You might want to cover it with a damp cloth until it's doubled in size. Now when you look at that, that has been about 45 minutes and it's bursting out of the tin. That's ready now. I'm gonna pop that in an oven. I've got 200 degrees with mine because it's a fan oven. If you've got a regular oven, maybe 220. Uh, that's 400 and 425 in Fahrenheit. Now let's pop that in there. It's gonna be about half an hour. Now often when I'm baking a pumpernickel or a sourdough, I want steam in the oven. So I've put a bath of hot water in the bottom and I'm spraying the inside of the oven with some water to create steam. You'll also notice that I've put a second loaf in there because I love pumpernickel. Now there is my pumpernickel out of the oven and uh, hopefully that'll release. Yes, beautifully so. I just need to tap that on the back. 
It's got a lovely hollow sound. Now, there it is. We want that to completely cool down. I've got my second one here. You, you saw that I put two in the oven. And this one as well is beautifully cooked. Now, I'm going to let them completely cool down on the side because with pumpernickel, if you cut those open now, all the steam will come out and you'll dry the bread out. So we'll come back when they've cooled down. Now I've ended up with two absolutely delicious pumpernickel breads and the smells coming off here are just fantastic. If you love pumpernickel, the smell now is just great. And they're the same size loaf actually. This one went in a lower tin and it's bloomed out. I love the way that one blooms and opens like that. Let's get and try these now, see what they look like. So I'm gonna cut this pumpernickel and traditionally it's cut very thin indeed. So let's slice this one down and look at that grain. It is absolutely perfect. Now I'm going to turn that so that you can see it. Now a pumpernickel normally when you have it, it's a very rich bread. So what we tend to do is cut it uh, very thin slices. Literally, I, I like my pumpernickel as thin as possible. So I'm gonna go down like that and we've got a slice of pumpernickel there. This is perfect, just sliced into two pieces. It's a very firm bread, and you can put a little bit of cream cheese on there or some smoked salmon. So here goes, let's just put some cream cheese on there. A few little baby capers. And I'm just going to have half of this for trying. Now, will you look at that? Here goes, now, the smell coming from this bread, the pumpernickel smell, it's just fantastic. Give this a try. Oh, and the taste. That is truly one of the most flavoursome breads. I, I absolutely love pumpernickel. I don't know why, I think it's just something from my childhood, but this is a great bread. I really would love you to give this one the thumbs up. If you ever get chance to make this at home, do so. This is just, absolutely knocks the socks off of anything you'll buy in the stores. Be good, and I'll see you in the next video. Auf Wiedersehen.